So yeah, welcome back to the show. Today's Wednesday as always. At this time, I am live on Instagram <clears throat> because um, I can't go on live on YouTube for now. So I'm still doing this whole setup. I record on normal cameras and I upload when I can, probably tomorrow, the next day. I just actually uploaded a studio tour showing you guys what my studio looks like. It's, I got a new microphone. It doesn't sound too good, but I, at least you can see kind of sort of what it's starting to look like. Uh, the space and everything. It's not easy to show um, how a space looks on video, <clears throat> especially if you're running around. But yeah, it's a seven minute video. You can watch it if you want now or later of me showing how it's going, the dark room, the size, what the spaces are going to be like, some of the cameras I have there already, and um, so forth. I have a fridge and all this stuff. I still have to take cameras. I still have a travel wide here and the Mamiya here and stuff like that. Today I want to start off um, with basically talking about the announcement of um, Michael Direct is coming out with a new Chrome film in um, 135. And, <coughs> excuse me. Um, they've basically announced a Vario Chrome uh, slide film in 135, but they said limited edition, and that's what I didn't understand. I gave the news yesterday, I talked about it, and I didn't know if it would be limited edition as maybe it was a small batch and then they would make more, or the boxing, which was very um, fancy, was a limited edition, something like, you know, Leica does or Lomography does. But today they announced that the um, Chrome film they're making is not going to be, um, it does not going to have a continuation. So basically this is a one of a kind. They're going to maybe do, do cut a few batches in 135 and that will be it. It's um, supposedly it can be exposed differently. It can be exposed at ISO 200 or it can be exposed in ISO 400 or 320 depending if you want to scan it or you want to, I guess, project it because you can't really uh, print it on cyberchrome anymore <clears throat> and i came to i found this box which i had just laying around here this is the um, ectochrome g from kodak which was actually a very nice film i enjoyed shooting it this is not actually shot by me this was from my lab and this is to show um why i've kind of came back to slide film even though i'm still not a big fan of it not because i don't like the film because i can't print it on any other way but going through a scanner. So this inside has some prints. And these are my kids. Um, if you guys follow me on social media and videos, they're pretty much my subject 99% uh, of the time. This was shot with a Pentax 6x7 on Provia 220 film that was expired at least four to five years ago. And um, scanned on a Frontier SP 3000 or 2000 and then printed on one of these Frontier automatic <coughs> labs and even though it's you know one of those prints you give to your family these were actually our postcards this year there's a bunch of them leftovers and um, I just want to say I really liked how it came out it had a bit of a pink hue to it I lowered the reds even though maybe I sacrificed some other colors because as you know when you get a dominance on color if you lower it you sometimes alter the other colors. So just want to say that this made me think about shooting slide film again. Even though I'm not a big fan of scanning and I'm not a big fan of printing digitally these prints are actually really nice. They're not up to like you know proper fiber based print or anything like that but they're fun. So I will be trying that Vario Chrome from uh, Roly. Um, I don't shoot 35 Chrome a lot. It's gonna come out at nine dollar, nine euros a roll, and um, I think it'll be fun to test it. You know, shoot it with a wide look, shoot it with a Leica, maybe something like that, and show you guys. I'll scan it, and I guess I'll do little prints or something like that. This was medium format, you can tell, and um, yeah, just gonna say that I'm gonna start shooting slide film more. As I said, I have some 8x10 and stuff like that, and uh, I'll be showing you guys what happens with slide film. So yeah, hopefully uh, Kodak will bring this Ektachrome soon. It won't be too expensive and we'll be able to enjoy it. So yeah, maybe I'll shoot some 4x5 slide film on the um, travel wide. If you guys, yeah, uh, Hogarth loves slide film. 
yeah, this is my travel wide. I have two, one's a friend, one's mine. With a 90, I etched it so the focusing points are, you know, properly aligned. I have some like little guidelines for shooting flash. I keep a, a film holder so I don't have any dust inside the camera. There's dust outside. Shoelace is the only thing that would go in as a um, proper strap. I started 365 on this. I had to stop because I was having too much fun and I shot way too much film. But one day I'll get to making a video on it. Um, Joey Delgadillo says, I heard people say that the new Rolly Chrome is repacked, new old stocked. It is. You actually go to Makalidekt, which is the people have, um, Makalidekt is a German store and um, they sell Rolly film. They manufacture and sell Rolly film. So they basically explain in, the, in their Instagram account that that Rolly film that came out, that Vario Chrome, is a big batch of someone else's slide film that they're repackaging and selling and that's why it's limited. <clears throat> so we can't expect more, sadly. We're gonna have to um, depend on Kodak making Ektachrome, Ferrania making their film, hopefully uh, Fuji not stopping their production. If not, we're gonna run out of slide film. If Fuji stops, we have the two projects of slide film, Ferrania and Kodak, which I think Kodak will stand up to its name and I think Ferrania is doing everything it can, but of course it's um, having a hard time because it's not easy uh, making uh, slide film out of nothing. So yeah, Joey says, okay, um, your channel is great. Thank you, Joey. I've been getting a lot of um, positive feedback with people and I really enjoy it. I do this for fun to help you guys and help others shooting film, promoting film. I don't care, whatever it is that makes people excited, I'm happy to help. So yeah, and uh, F Montage says, color, color slides in large format must be incredible. I actually re um, recommend if you guys are on YouTube and watch stuff, you can follow Ben Horn. He does like video vlogging with large format. He's been doing it for years and he does like a film reveal where he grabs like a light table and like shows his slide film. He shoots a uh, Velvia 50. Then he started doing some black and white. He also does some uh, Kodak Ektar, which is not slide film, but yeah. I recommend you, sh you follow Ben. He's got some good content. He makes like these videos where he goes out um, in the national parks in the States. And it's actually really interesting. I would love to see Ben travel somewhere that's not the States just because I think it'd be fun to see him out and about. And um, traveling with film on airplanes and stuff like that. It'd be interesting to see. But yeah, he just got a new Arca Swiss, which is um, 8x10. And um, I'm pretty excited to see what he makes with it. So yeah. I also brought out, which was gathering, the name of the guy on YouTube. It's Ben, B-E-N, Horn. It's like H-O-R-N-E. So Ben Horn. If you write 8x10 slide film on YouTube, I'm sure he comes up one of the first. Or 8x10 um, you, like camera. He's there for sure. He wears glasses. He's got like a beard and he usually wears a hat. Um, Hi, uh, Falkar. And um, I also brought out, so you guys could see another camera from Mamiya. This is the C330, and it has the pentaprism, which is like almost as big as the camera itself. And um, I've had this for a while. I've had a few of these cameras, and I love them. The bag bellows, um, sorry, the bellows makes it really nice to close up focus. This one has parallel um, compensation, so as you're focusing closer, there's a line telling you what the top of the image is. Then you have like the shutter here. You can change the lenses and all this. And I love that. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys so you can see the size of, for example, uh, travel wide next to a Mamiya C330. They're pretty much the same size. Just so you can consider what six by six can be and what four by five can be. Um, Michael says, hi Nico, I have a 65 from my Mamiya 7.2. I need a portrait lens. How difficult is the focusing on the 150? <clears throat> um, Michael, I have the Mamiya 7, I have the 65, the 80, and the 150. I've had the 52. Um, I have to say the 150 is actually, the focusing distance is 1.8 meters. 
it doesn't make it that much longer than the 80 um, when you end up shooting but you have to consider that it will compress the background as you know um, longer lenses compress it's not that hard to focus some people say you have to take it to your technician and get it calibrated it's an f 4.5 lens so you either shoot some high ISO, I mean a fast film with a high ISO so you can stop it down at least the stop go from f 4.5 maybe to 5.6 or f8 and you should be okay of course the closer you are that 1.8 the focus depth of field is really small I've shot with it maybe four to five rolls it's a very special lens it ends up making the Mamiya 7 like huge like if this like longer like the back would be here the front of the lens is here where the lens hood is huge and I'd never use it that much but they are cheap lenses you can test it out even though whatever you buy it'll be hard to sell because not a lot of people like it so yeah you it's not difficult to focus the patch is like the patch is the same size okay the patch won't change just like a Leica camera the patch doesn't change in size what changes is the frame lines turn from being like the 8 like 65 the 80 and then it's like boom the 150 so it looks really small but it's just the frame lines I would say com like composition wise it's a little harder than focusing wise because it's just so small but um, I say try to see if you can rent it if you can find a store someone that can lend it to you go on Facebook ask groups and see like hey can someone lend me or let me shoot the 150 if you come here to Bilbao I'll help I'll lend you mine um, it's gathering you know just not dust but it's on a shelf right now uh, it's 1.5 or 1.8 I'm not sure green darkroom it says what bothers me about the 150 is the 1.5 close distance um, F montage says that Mamiya sturdy like a tank stopped one time at the Ukraine border the guards thought it was some kind of military equipment yeah, these Mamiyas are big and heavy, that's for sure. And um, then you can like change the lens. I don't know if I have any film in here. No. But yeah, you can change the lens and it's pretty fun that you can just have a camera that will let you do it. Oh, I must have not put the back in. Let's see, there. So you guys, can change the lens you can see actually on at least on the phone you can see the lines for the parallax so when I move those lines will move and when I go back also but yeah as green darkroom is saying it's kind of hard for portraits the 150 on the Mamiya 7 I would say it's a great can uh, lens more than for portraits it's for getting up close when you're shooting like um, urban landscape or city life or street photography where you want to whatever you want to call it that 150 really helps like I love being on a different height and shooting down at the street and that 150 will really crop in the uh, the image so yeah I think that's what it's fun for I think for portraits the Mamiya 7 you have the 80 if not just move to like a bellows camera like the Mamiya RZ or maybe a Hasselblad with a, with a 150 even though the Hasselblad and the 150 also have a pretty long um, you know focusing distance and I like having like a full face on my um, images so yeah that's what I would choose so um, keeping on with this camera you guys can also exchange the um, focusing screens which is not much of an option on most TLRs you can change the top the prism and then you can change the focusing screens so you keep on going and you can change them sorry I'm screwing it the other way around but yeah it's now it's when I don't remember how to take it off hmm I wonder it's what happens when you don't use a camera for a long time well can't remember how to take it off right now I have the split image I find those the easiest I don't know if you guys can see it but it has like a split circle in the middle and um, those are the easiest for me to focus so yeah that's what I recommend if you're gonna be shooting um, medium format 
that will really nail your focus. There we go. This one's a little beat up. That's why I don't use it a lot. Because some, like the times are a little sluggish. Um, the good thing is you can change the, um, the shutter inside. Like you can fix the shutters. They're independent lenses. You can change this, put another one and have a good lens working. Um, another thing I've had this week, I've had a lot of questions about large format and what cameras to recommend. There's um, someone in Sri Lanka that's been asking me about shooting 8x10. He bought a P1. He thinks it's too big and too heavy. Now he wants to change it for something smaller. And he was recommending, like asking me for what do I recommend if a small camera, big camera. And I told him like, in my honest opinion, I recommend a Chamonix 4x5 um, F1. It has back bellows. It has the normal bellows. It will focus pretty close with the extend, like extension. It will I'll focus real small, like close. I mean, re, um, wide angles with you. Um, I'll say it with the back bellows, and you can do architecture, all kinds of things. So yeah, that's something he's been asking me, and um, what kind of film, and how to focus, and all this stuff. So I'll be doing, hopefully at some point, some videos on large format. It's Mamiya. I guess you guys can read it the other way around. It's mirrored on Instagram. But yeah, so any questions you guys have, as always, remember you can ask. I'll be happy to help you guys. Um, I'm planning a trip to the States. Um, oh, Joey, I asked on YouTube, but you might as well hear, but I'd be super interested in RA4 um, printing. I think I answered you. Maybe you didn't get the message. But one of the people in my studio is going to be, one of my partners is going to be developing and I mean printing only RA4 um, paper. If you guys don't know what RA4 paper, it's uh, color printing in the darkroom. So from color negative, you enlarge onto color paper. It's called RA4, it's the chemical process. And I'll be making videos on that because he does a lot of um, RA4. He shoots mainly with a Mamiya RZ and a Pentax 6x7. He does long trips and he takes his um, Pentax, shoots 50 rolls and then he prints. So I'll be documenting his way of shooting, making videos for you guys to understand how it works, even though there's no light when you print, but I'll figure out a way to show you how it's done. Um, can you use some of those with 35? What do you mean? Some of what? Can you use some of those? You mean RA4 or you mean, I don't know. Well, answer me, um, Hedu. Tell me what you mean by can you use some of those with 35? Um, but yeah, I'll be showing Joey how to print RA4 paper in the darkroom and how to change the contrast with paper, how to do dodging and burning on RA4, how to develop it. Um, can I use this with 35? Um, this is a 6x6, so you can use 35 with, um, I'm telling you, I've forgotten how to use this camera. You can use 35 with adapters. There's these little like, there we go. This is a six by six camera. So you can use 35 with those adapters that will adapt the 35 cartridge to um, six by six, like 120. And you put your roll of uh, 35 here and you have to stick it to like an empty spool. When you finish your roll, you have to go to the dark room, take it out and develop it. You'll get, um, I think it's 12 shots, no, 20 shots on 35. You got to change it to 220 film. This has the, the pressure plate here. So you would change it to 220 there. It has a little red dot, it says 220, 120. And you can shoot, um, 35. I wouldn't do 35 here. You're just going to get all the sprockets. It's probably going to be not the best idea. This needs a change of light seals. You can't see you guys, but the light seals are really screwed up. Um, these were really um, well used as wedding cameras back in the day. So that's why this one's probably beat up. I bought it in Miami and a lot of weddings in Miami. So let me see, I didn't close that properly. There we go. I'm telling you, this does not work very well. There we go, now. 
it's locked. It has a little lock on the back here. And it says 120. If you put it to 220, it says 220. Then it also has um, a little bar here that you probably can't see, but there's a bar on the side here, which you can change. And depending on the focusing um, on the lens, it will give you, um, I think the depth of field. Yep. So at what distance you're focusing. So right now I have the 65. So you put the 65 there. You have, for example, 55 and the 180. The 180, the 55 is very close here. And um, 180 is here. No, yeah, 55 super close, 180 super far. Then you go the other way, you go to 65 to 80, uh, 105, and um, 35, no, 135, sorry. And then 250, there was a 250 lens for this, which was really long. And um, that's the fun thing about this camera is you can use all these kinds of lenses has a lock so you won't screw up your shots. You cock it um, advancing and then also you can cock it on the lens. So you have like a little large format little lens here. I haven't used it so long. Yep. So yeah, that's the Mamiya. C330. There, there's how much do you like the Wonderlust? Um, Hilton Photo. The Wonderlust, I think, is a really fun camera. I was backer number four on their Kickstarter. I was following the project um, long before they started that Kickstarter. And I thought it was really fun. I mean, a large format camera that you could hand hold and shoot around. I was a big fan of, of Photo Man was another large format camera that was very similar to this, but it was $1,000. And uh, when they announced this, I was like, I'm, I want one. And being uh, the fourth backer, I paid 40 bucks without the lens. And that to me is an amazing price for this little camera. It's, it's fun to use. It's um, pretty reliable. I put it on a tripod and once and shot with this lens. It was um, designed around this lens, which is the Schneider Angulon 90 f 6.8. Super small, um, small footprint, small filters, really fun to use and uh, lightweight. This weighs probably like as much as an Olympus XA with a flash. And um, so it's nothing. And it's fun, the results are good. I've liked it more for the fact of like taking a large format camera wherever you didn't think you would take it. So I've taken it street photography, I've taken pictures of my kids, I've taken to a boat, to the beach, places you would never take a large format camera to play around. I've taken it. The only problem I see is the large format film holders take a lot of space and there's not a lot of shots. So I'm telling you two shots per film holder. I use it like that and it kind of grips it and it's pretty fun. Um, also paid very little for the lens. I think I paid 80 bucks for this lens. It has like some boss like separation on the element and you can't tell. So I have a really fun time with this cheap combo. It was $120 altogether. Um, so I highly recommend it. I hope they make it again. I really do. Um, F Montage says, going to Tibet soon. Some advices on shooting 135 black and white, probably T-Max at extreme altitudes. Maybe some filter to tame extreme contrast. No scanning, darkroom only, so need to control contrast. Um, my brother went not to Tibet. He went to India and the border between India and Pakistan. And he took some uh, Canon AOS 5 and some black and white film. I recommended him at the time Neopans uh, 1600 and it was really fun. He wasn't going that high, I think, as you were, uh, you are, but his pictures came out really nice and um, it, it was amazing. I mean, I, I don't know, I would recommendations or filters. If you want to tame contrast and not have a lot of contrast, you would have to shoot a slow film and um, not develop it with a very strong developer. So if you're gonna do like HC um, 110, I mean, yeah, HC 110, 
do something like extra diluted so it won't be it'd be very flat you can use uh, d76 I found gives you very flat negatives or it just filters usually add contrast like yellow will add red would add I don't know the blue or green I'm not very fond of, I'm not very um, like I don't know a lot about them but yeah, I would say shoot like uh, T Max 100 or T Max 400 and uh, develop it very on a very like you know not so strong developer. Use something like D76 or AC 110 maybe instead of B. Go to a higher dilution maybe stand development, which it can work really well, and it really has like not a lot of contrast. <clears throat> maybe pyro, but just pyro is not the best for 35. Um, 20 Focar says, do you know the minimum, um, focus distance for the Mamiya TLR? Well, with the 65, which is on right now, the minimum focus will be, I'm going to tell you. Okay. I'm going to have to point at the travel wide. Like that's the distance where I'm focusing the travel wide. That's like my fingers. That's the distance. So with a 65, it's around 12 to 15 centimeters, I'd say. Look, a box of four by five. It's a box of four by five. Yeah, like a, a box of four by five on the small side. So like 10 centimeters. That's with the 65. If you put the 80, it probably is a little more, but I would say 15 to 20 centimeters is the minimum focus. That's really close. So you can shoot like extreme close-ups. Also depth of field is really small. You have um, exposure compensation. I don't know if it's indicated here. Oh wait, it's indicated on the screen. So when you're looking at that distance, It says almost three stops more light. Um, and F Montage says D76 and T Max looks like a really solid combo. I say go for it. You're going to enjoy it. Um, take some T Max 400 and T Max uh, 100, and you need to push a few rolls, push the uh, 400 to 1600. Um, Thien, Thien says, I have a question. So I just switched from Pyro development to normal developer. Last night, I developed some Triax with D76-11 dilution for 6 minutes and 30 seconds at 27 degrees. Wow, I've never developed that warm. Agitate first 30 seconds, then 2 inverses per minute. The scans is very grainy and high contrast. Um, I have to say, you develop for 6 minutes and 30 seconds. I don't know if that's the official time, but 27 degrees is way warmer than you should be developing. Try to bring it down at least to 24 and check times. But to me, if it's Tri-X at six minutes and 30 seconds, 27 degrees, you've at least given it like a few, like you've pushed your film basically with, with the temperature. So check for that. Um, I don't think that should be the time. Look, I actually on the computer, sorry. Um, let me see, mass. I know massive developing is not the best. Oh my God, sorry. Massive dev chart is not the best place, but it's a good place to start. Um, let's see what it says. Try X, select the film. If you guys don't know this page, it's um, it's called Digital Truth, even though it's all film. I've never really understood that. Um, Try X 400, not 320. That's the old Try X or the sheet film. D76, uh, search. Okay, so you did one. Um, 35. Okay. So any cheap slide film for 35, I would say go for the Agfa cheap film. It's the Agfa film. I think it's Prethisa. Agfa, 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 not the aerial corporate camera. And, um, it's pretty cheap. And I've been told it's exactly the same as Provia about us. This is when you can't find something. You just go to the store. It's just I don't shoot a lot of slide film in 35. But yeah, the Agfa is the cheapest I know of in 35. Let me put it in 
English. If I can find where to put it in English here. English, yeah, CT Precisa, exactly. That's, I've heard, is the same as Provia. Um, my lab where I take all my film to, when I don't develop myself, he did um, with a color chart, the ACFA and the, um, ah, the ACFA and the Fuji, compared it and he said they looked exactly the same. So I would go with that. Film, color, slide film. Where you based also it depends a lot on where you're based, the prices. Filter, price, no. We want to filter by um, 35. Okay, there's no film type. 35 pocket film. That's what it says here. Mm, yeah, Agfa is seven euros and 69 cents. Based in Sevilla. Oh, Sevilla. Yo estoy en Bilbao. Entonces coge la ACFA, la precisa, es la más barata. Aquí también tienes la Rolex Crossbird. But yeah, ACFA is going to be the cheapest you find. And developing is not cheap, but I mean, nowadays, nothing's really very cheap. Uh, Velvia 50 is 15 euros here in Europe. Provia is 13. Velvia is 15. And Lomography is 17 for three, so 597, which is much cheaper. Well, try the Lomography X-Pro slide film. I'm just not a big fan of Lomography. I like um, consistent results. Yeah, judging the pictures, I wouldn't shoot this. Uh, washes your shots with juicy colors and saturation. Not my kind of film. So yeah, Agfa Precisa is what I would recommend. But yeah, any other questions you guys have, um, be happy to help. I was shooting actually, talking about contrast and uh, film, I was shooting on this is um, Fomapan 400 and pushing it two stops to 1600. And I used the massive developing chart and um, the shots actually look pretty good. I mean, there is grain, but being large format, you don't um, see that much grain and it looks pretty decent to me at least. So yeah, I recommend trying out pushing um, four by five film for fun. You can also shoot, um, how do you say, handheld with other cameras apart from this. You've got the Graflex have the rangefinder. There's a Horseman with a rangefinder. Linhoff have rangefinder. This one's not a rangefinder base, but you can use an external rangefinder and transfer that to the scale. There's a scale on the outer ring here. And you move this plastic little focusing uh, ring. It has a little notch there. Um, James says, have you used the Jobo Daylight Tank? I have one, but seems to be catching and tearing the negs halfway through. Um, James, I've used Jobo tanks a lot. Um, you would have to tell me what Daylight Tank you have. And um, why is it breaking your negatives? I, I use Jobo, I think it's not like always. I've been using it since I started shooting film again in 2008 or 2009 but um jobo 2400 is it the one that you can like it cuts your own film and then you just spool it because if it's that one maybe that's what's going wrong um sublifer says por cierto hay en bilbao un lab que revele rápido ser posible el mismo día sublifer interfoto en madrid es el que yo mando así que es el mejor todos los días revelan um james is that well, the, as I was asking you, the Jobo tank that will cut your film. If not, go for a Jobo 1520 tank, which will do um, two rolls of 220 or, I mean, a 120, two, one roll of 220 or two rolls of 35. And they it uses uh, 500 milliliters, half a liter of chemicals. I, that's what the one I use at, um, at my workshops and it works really well. But yeah, if it's if it's that one that's like the daylight tank that you just and if you guys are scared of a dark room, and people complain, that's what I was talking about with um I think it was new fifty five the other day about how RZ Mago's um lab box was so successful, 
it's really nice to see the support they had but like why would it be so popular being something that's been outdated i mean that's a rondin axe that's been made again and the rondin axe is not a popular thing and um it's the fact that people are scared of the dark room um get a changing bag they're like 10 bucks on ebay you can use your bathroom and close it and put a towel on the floor people go under their sheets at night or a wardrobe or anything like that and you can change your film uh, there's some changing tents from eBay on China and uh, they're cheap you can pack it anywhere you can take it on your suitcase I've used like a changing I, I take a I think it's I don't know where it is it's somewhere here I have a changing bag that's so small that fits like I mean it fits wherever this fits that fits and I just changed my film on the go load it so yeah I would just do that if I were you. Uh, the day daylight tanks are fun, but they're not really... If they haven't lasted till today, it's because of a reason. It's because at the end, they probably are not consistent with the results. Um, 24car says, what difference did you see from HP5 and Fomapan 400? In 4x5, my main difference was price. I was shooting a project and um, I wanted to shoot a lot. And Fomapan 400 comes at less than a euro per shot, and HP5 comes at least over a euro. So that was what I wanted. And um, it worked for me for the project. I have a lot of negatives that I like. Would I shoot HP5 if I could? I probably would have, but it was a matter of buying like three to 400 sheets, and I didn't want to spend that much money. And um, it worked. It worked for me. I would have to compare one on one. Uh, Joey says, I love developing stuff, super easy. I just got some official Kodak C41 chems, ch oh, sorry, chemicals to do C41 correctly. Super excited to test it out tonight. Yeah, the, the Kodak kit is like humongous. It's like 20 liters per, like it's a kit of like five bottles that will give you five liters each. Um, Tetanal has been raising the prices a lot and they've come down to the 2.5 liters. I think they discontinued the one liter and the five liters. And that's kind of sad because I really enjoyed that five liter kit. It was pretty cheap. It was around like 45 to 50 euros. It was, I would do like 18 rolls per liter. So, I mean, that's a lot of film. That's almost a hundred rolls with 60 euros. So it was a little less than a euro or a dollar per roll. and yeah, I enjoyed it. Now it's a more expensive and smaller chemistry. So yeah, I wonder. Um, Subli Fair says, last question. It may sound quite weird, but any experience pushing slide film, guys? Um, you used to have the Fuji 400X, which was really easy to push. I haven't pushed the slide film, but you can. But you have to tell your lab. And um, it's not going to be cheap to push. But you can push film. You can push slide film. You, I don't know if you get, I guess you gain contrast. It turns into even less, you know, amount of light it can handle, like, like light difference. But yeah, I'll test it out one day and show you guys what I think about pushing. I wanted to buy some 400X, which I shot a few times, but I never pushed it. So yeah, I would see, try that, get that Rolly film, that Vario Chrome and push it to 1600 or something like that. But yeah, slide film and pushing is not something done every day today, but it's it can be done. You can talk to the lab I told you and um, they'll recommend you what to do and how to shoot and what film they recommend to push because they have a lot of experience doing that. So yeah, um, C41, as I was saying, is actually really nice. And I found it really cheap to do yourself. If you're doing like amateur photography and you're not working for it, making a living, I highly recommend you do your own C41 and even your own E6. If you have a Jobo, you can find Jobo machines secondhand still for around three to 400 euros or dollars. You shoot 10 to 20 rolls a year, you've paid for that um, in developing. But yeah, um, Hogarth, which is usually online uh, here, he bought a Jobo, I think, thanks to me telling him to do it. I don't remember, it was me who told him. And he does a lot of slide, and he's doing it cheaply. So yeah, I highly recommend you try it out and see what happens. I thought I had some slide film there. But yeah, 
pushing slide film is for sure something a lot of people don't do because of the price of the film and the developing, but you can do it. Um, maybe I'll try pushing some large format film and see what happens there. I have a ton of large format slide film. I want to send some to a friend and see what he thinks about it. And um, I have some 4x5 that's ultra expired. Maybe I'll do some cross processing or some black and white with um, E6 and stuff like that. So yeah, any other questions guys? There's like five more minutes and I'll be gone. Um, if you want to ask anything. I have here something too that I haven't showed you guys. And it's a macro um, 8x10 lens. It's a 210 um, macro and it comes with like indications of 3 to 1 on one side and the other side says 1 third to 1. So I still have to guess how this works because I've never shot macro on large format. But the lens works and I'm pretty excited to shoot with it. There you go. The one second time is not working so well. Look, you'll see. You see? Not working. I don't know, half a second. Yeah. Um, Fian says, what's the standard focal length on large format? Well, as every format, it's pretty much usually the same kind of like um, formula. It's the diagonal. So if it's four by five and you're measuring 10 by 12 centimeters, the diagonal is around 135 to 150. So four by five, it's a 150, 135 is the standard. On eight by 10, you have 20 by 25 centimeters. The diagonal is around 320. So a 300 would be a normal lens. Then if you're going to 11 by 14, you have a 35 by 28 and the normal, I think is like 450 millimeters. So, and but it all changes a lot. Um, yeah, that I got to fix that lens, but I probably won't shoot at that one second. I'll just do like bulb because macro you lose a lot of light but yeah um someone was asking me like lenses for four by five so wide is less than 150 or 135 and long is more than 150 so a 210 is very usual as a longer lens 150 is a standard lens and 90 is a wide but you can go wide to 47 and you can go long to 600 so or over you can go to a thousand but you just need like a meter bellows to focus at infinite but yeah and then for example this lens is a 45 and it won't cover 4 by 5 but it would almost cover it so that would be extremely wide and then depending on the yeah basically depending on the format it's just the diagonal is the normal lens like a 6 by 6 camera like this Mamiya it's uh, 80 on a 6 by 7 it's like 90 on a six by nine, it's like a hundred, 110. So it's always the diagonal is approximately the, the normal lens. So yeah, well guys, um, I think I'm gonna call it uh, a day. Thanks again for joining me. If you guys have any questions, remember you can contact me through social media, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, or whatever you guys want. And um, I'll try to solve your questions. And thanks again for joining me on Wednesday at 9 o'clock uh, Spanish time. Uh, see you next week. Thank you.